Okay, guys, I want you to drop a big fat hypers in chat if you... Actually, no, not a hypers. Just type one. Just type one. Drop a one in chat if you know who Lily Orchard is. Now, if you don't know who Lily Orchard is, I'll just kind of give fill you guys in on it. Um, Lily Orchard is kind of a bitch. She's legitimately a bad person. Um, probably one of the most bad faith actors I've ever seen on this website. Like, I'm not even kidding. She's, like, a bad person. Um, there's even be been leaks from my understanding that she had some, like, uh, uh, um, like, some abusive relationships with past partners and stuff like that. Like, like, li literally, like, a bad person. Um, now she made a really bad video just recently about ContraPoints called, uh, Glass of Water, Natalie Whinging. And, um, in this video, she literally, I'm not even kidding, literally accuses ContraPoints... Wait for it, where is it? Literally accuses ContraPoints of... Where the fuck is it? Come on, I wanna, I wanna bring it up. Come on. Fuck, I can't find it. She brings up a point where, uh, because uh, ContraPoints did a video on capitalism where she criticizes capitalism and, as a joke, represented capitalists as reptiles because, you know, there's, like, conspiracy theorists who believe that all the rich people in the world are secretly reptiles, and um, she accused ContraPoints of being anti-Semitic. I'm not even kidding you. Lily Orchard, without backing it up in any way, accuses ContraPoints of selling anti-Semitic merchandise with the fucking reptiles shirt for with, with like the rich people so she's a bitch and a bad faith actor okay now we're not covering this flaming dumpster trash fire of a video by Lily Orchard today on on ContraPoints because I don't want to defend ContraPoints anymore instead we're gonna be covering this garbage video by her and instead we're cut and it's about it's about steven universe it's called steven universe's garbage and here's why 3.5 million views she blocked uh, likes and dislikes can't see how it did she made a terrible video on steven universe and guess what guys last time i tried to to go up against somebody who um was shitting on uh, steven universe in order to um boost their political agenda it was er and I hadn't seen Steven Universe yet, which kind of hindered my ability to respond. But guess what, everybody? In preparation for this, I binged all of Steven Universe. I binged all of it. I just watched the movie. I'm super excited for Steven Universe future. I now know all of the memes about Steven Universe, and I feel I can respond to this. This is a two-hour video that she has made. And... There are basically no good claims made in it. From my understanding, at one point, from what I remember, she um, she even says that, uh, uh, she claims that Rebecca Sugar is a fascist sympathizer because the diamonds, type one in chat if you've seen, seen Steven Universe, because if you don't know what's going on, I'm going to have to explain it to you guys. The diamonds are fascists, and they get redeemed through not being fascists anymore, and... The fact that they get redemption means that Rebecca Sugar is a fascist sympathizer. Very interesting line of thinking, but we're going to turn this video up to a fat 1.5 times speed, and we're going to watch this shit. Who's ready? Hypers in chat if you're hyped. Oh, good lord, this was a mistake. Steven Universe was a revolutionary cartoon that shook the boundaries of children's entertainment and bringing it to new heights. Or rather, everybody thought that it was. In reality, Steven Universe turned out to be a mess of inconsistent storytelling, mashed up cliches that haven't been allowed to die, a conga line of characters so consistently horrible that it's like being around all of your worst family members for the longest Thanksgiving ever. Steven Universe enjoyed ample praise and lavishings from the general press when it first aired. But as time went on, its fan base became significantly more critical and unhappy with the show's contents, to the point that being critical of the show was an entire subculture of its own, and that is not undeserved. Everything about the show is unprofessional and lazy, from its writing to the animation to the very core ideas the series pretends to have. It's long since burned off much of the goodwill it initially had, and these days people are just trying to figure out what went wrong. That's what I'm gonna try to do here, going as in-depth as I possibly can. But Lord knows even I miss something because it just keeps getting worse and worse as time wears on. Dear fucking- Okay. So, one thing I should probably point out right now is that Lily Orchard is obnoxiously angry in all of her videos. She is ranting into her microphone. She is- she is molding into her microphone loudly. Um, 
Now, this video got dislike bomb to hell, um, but I'd also like to point out that I believe this video, it came out on September 24th, 2018, and um, for a while, from what I remember, Steven Universe felt like it wasn't going anywhere, but then out of fucking nowhere, this episode, ha there's an episode that happens, I won't spoil it, <clears throat> but an episode happens where a big thing is revealed. Those who've seen the show know what I'm talking about. It's like a big fucking deal. It, it's old spoilers, but there's people in chat who literally haven't seen the show. Um, a big thing is revealed. It's like, fuck, it changes everything about the show. All right, you're just going to say it. Yeah, Rose Quartz is Pink Diamond. Big, big meme. It ends up being very significant to the story because it also means Steven is Pink Diamond. And it's like a big, it's a big, it's a big thing. All right. So... I believe this video came out before that, so some of her criticisms will probably just be outdated because she made this uh, video prior to, like, a huge arc-concluding thing happened, you know? Um, so this video is a bit old, but it's also quite relevant, so fuck it, dude. We're gonna watch this shit as, as this girl mauls over a cartoon. Lord, somebody please end my miserable existence. This is a thorough deconstruction of why Steven Universe is a garbage show that is bad. We are the crystal gems. We'll always save the day. And if you think we can, we'll always find a way. That's why the people of this world believe in God and Amethyst and Pearl and Steven. DJ Peppo on that shit. I've gotten something of a reputation in the past for shitting on serialization, and I need to make it clear that I don't necessarily hate serialization itself. I hate the prevailing attitude that serialization is objectively superior to episodic storytelling in every possible scenario. Like any other narrative tool, serialization works very well when it's appropriate to the story. It's very easy to just say that shows with a continuous overarching plot are always better than a monster of the week, but that's just flat out not true, and it's most evident in shows that try to have it both ways. But regardless of what narrative tool you decide to use for your show, you do have to pick one, and this is what seems to trip up Rebecca Sugar at every possible angle. Steven Universe has this long overarching plot about the Crystal Gem War and Homeworld discovering they're still active and fucking with their plans. Now, for a while, the Crystal Gems and Homeworld plot was really interesting, and we'll get into why that fell down the plug hole in just a few minutes. But what was consistently aggravating is that Sugar clearly wanted to maintain a Monster of the Week vibe on top of that and focus on more character-specific elements like the- This didn't age well. This really didn't age well, did it, chat? Anybody who's seen Steven Universe and is caught up, Whew, this video does not age well. Last Airbender did. Now, I already <coughs> hear you confuse comments going, but don't you love that shit, Lily? Yes, I do. But there's a problem. You see, it wasn't character work for the characters you would think would get the time and focus. Steven? Connie? Pearl? Amethyst? Garnet? Peridot? Lapis? Nah, clearly nothing to do with any of them. Let's have seven different episodes about why Lars is an unbelievable douche. Let's do three about Ronaldo being a conspiracy theorist. Oh, Let's no. Do Dewey for some fucking reason. They don't know. She doesn't know. Oh, God. She doesn't know where they go with these plot lines. This is probably one of the biggest things that I've seen a problem with people who, like, um, shit on Steven Universe. Even as somebody who hadn't seen the show up until a couple weeks ago. Um, like, it, they, they waited till pretty far into the show to actually reveal all the story shit. And so when people make videos criticizing it, they don't really know. They don't really know what, what happens. Ooh, I know. How about that? Her takes on the LGBTQ themes of the show are incredibly stupid. Oh, I know. I I know. One family that runs a pizza shop. I bet their lives are totally fucking interesting. What's that? Intergalactic fascism with a smattering of natural rule? <sniffs> Boring. Let's talk about the wrestling scene. That's where the real action's at. You see, the side stories in The Last Airbender were so good because they offered insight into a primary character. The Southern Raiders was about Katara getting revenge on the man that killed her mother. Zuko alone was about witnessing firsthand the damage that his father's warmongering has been causing on the Earth Kingdom. <laughs> the Last Airbender didn't have an entire character arc for the Cabbage Guy. But that's what Steven Universe is doing. The residents of Beach City aren't active players in the thin veneer of a story that Steven Universe pretends to have. They're background characters. They're weirdly misshapen, constantly shrinking Lyras. They don't get proper character arcs because they show up, deal with the crisis of the day, and then go sit in the green room until sugar wants to stop i don't know if i want to like i shouldn't have to do this but most of what she's saying here did not age well um because most of these characters end up having like pretty important plots to the story um lars's story ends up having a shit ton to do with like the homeworld shit and the corrupted gems and all that then that ends up being a big meme um and he becomes kind of a gem because he dies and then steven heals him with his tears because steven's God, um, whew, this didn't age well, and we're only four minutes in. All for time again. Literally the only one who does change is Lars, and that's because Sugar literally oh, okay. fucking killed him and replaced him with another character entirely. The rest of them are just there to distract from the fact that the story is dragging on and on and on. Normally, filler is fine to flesh out the world and the other characters, but the world- Wait, then why did she bring up Lars as an example? Okay, listen, Rook, 
Steven's basically God. In the Steven universe, he can fly. He's like ridiculously strong. He's 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 real. He's he's a bit of a he's pretty fucking tough. He is not a Mary Sue, I would argue. He's 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 earned his 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 overpoweredness, but you know. Being fleshed out is Earth, which doesn't need fleshing out. The characters being explored are random bit parts who ultimately mean nothing, and they're not funny. Filler episodes of shows are usually the fun, light-hearted episodes the writers use to ease off the tension of the main story, if they have one. Steven Universe doesn't have that need for easing tension, as the filler episodes outnumber the story episodes considerably. It almost feels like Sugar wanted to have a story about an intergalactic space war, but this, also I will give... I will give Lily Orchard this, alright? A lot of shows like this do have a problem with filler slash bottle episodes. I completely get it. Now, Steven Universe, eh, there's some bad ones, but you do have to throw in a few bottle episodes into the fray to keep things lighthearted, especially when we're talking about a, a show on Cartoon Network. But God, a show that got really fucked over by bottle episodes was Adventure Time. Holy shit. I was, um, I was basically molding this whole last year until the reboot of Adventure Time was announced for H um, the HBO app. Um, I was so fucking mad because the final season of Adventure Time was 90% filler episodes and then like 10% episodes that actually explain story shit, you know, like, like, like character backstory and stuff. And the finale for me, I, di I didn't, I was really disappointed by the finale. So like, I get where she's coming from here, being frustrated at, at, um, bottle episodes and there's an overarching story that's way more interesting. But um, like I said before, uh, the show did go on to basically take these characters that had all these bottle episodes made out of them that kind of seemed irrelevant and made them very significant to the main story. <clears throat> wanted to just write fanfics about random people in Beach City and couldn't seem to pick one. And for a while that worked for her. The fandom at the very least seemed to love all of this, and Steven Universe Circus Season 1 had an extremely critically undiscerning fanbase. But everything changed when the hiatus is attacked. Steven Universe schedule went off the rails almost immediately, airing regularly for a while but then condensing itself into short bursts of episodes called Steven Bombs. The first hiatus lasted for 41 days and started with the episode Bubble Buddies, the seventh episode of the series. The show had just started and it was already taking a break. The second lasted three weeks with Arcade Mania just five episodes later. The third lasted another three weeks with another five episodes later. Then they got progressively worse. The fourth hiatus lasted just over three months and came back to Coach Steven just five episodes after the last hiatus came back, and then stuck around consistently for a few months before going on hiatus for another month. We're not even through season one yet, and already Steven Universe has been on hiatus for over 220 days. The sixth hiatus finally broke into season two, lasting 45 days and returned to Sworn to the Sword. Then, only a week later, went on hiatus for another three- Is she blaming the creators for these hiatuses? I, I know these hiatuses happened. I I they happened with Adventure Time too, even worse. But is she blaming the creators for the hiatuses? Three weeks to come back to cry for help in Keystone Motel. Then a week later, starting to see the theme, went on hiatus for another 54 days and returned to Nightmare Hospital. Then the show managed to remain consistent for a little while before going on hiatus again for 80 days and coming back to The Answer. Once again, the show lasted for only another week before having the second longest hiatus of five months between then and Super Watermelon Eye. Another five episodes, then it went on hiatus again for 44 more days, returning to the summer of Steven, okay. where the series managed to stay on air for the rest of the summer. Then the 12th hiatus came, lasting another two months and returned on Gem Harvest. The 13th hiatus lasted another two months, returning on... Uh, okay... Get to a point here. Steven's dream. Then another one that was just under three weeks, so I don't count it. Then the longest hiatus of six fucking months. And this uh -huh. was arguably the most egregious offender because the series left off on Lars dying and being revived and then left on Homeworld. And then we came back to a municipal election. Steven being pissy that Connie won't talk to him. Lapis panicking that Homeworld is coming to Earth and reminding everyone that there are fascists in space coming to kill them all. And Steven and the cool kids start a band. Then the show went on hiatus for another three months. Steven Universe spent so much time on hiatus that the waiting just continued to wear people down. This isn't the fault of the creators, the writers, or anybody involved with the show whatsoever. Guys, this happened with so many shows on Cartoon Network. So here's the problem. Cartoon Network for a long time, from like 2014 to just recently, although they're still doing it, is like fucked with their schedule. Um, basically, Cartoon Network has this tendency to get like... They need a flagship show. They want to get their flagship show. They want to push it down everybody's throats and not air anything else until... They've milked it dry. And and even if they have other shows on the network, they will put it on hiatus. They will make it so you, so you can only watch it on their website. They will fuck over every other show besides their flagship. And after Adventure Time, their flagship was um, uh, uh, Teen Titans Go. And they fucking aired nothing. Absolutely jack shit other than Teen Titans Go. For God, how long was it? Hmm... I don't know, like three and a half years, and um, Adventure Time got it even worse. They were literally airing 12 episodes of Adventure Time 
it just in a burst they would just become available on the website and you'd be lucky if they showed up on the actual channel they would put 12 episodes of adventure time up every three months you would have to wait three months for for a 12 episode burst of the show and uh, people wonder why or and they wonder why it got canceled or why it had to end. Um, they did the same shit with Steven Universe. This, you cannot blame this on the creators or Becca Sugar or any of the writers, okay? They cannot do anything about this. They can write the show they want to write. It is the fucking suits at Cartoon Network that decide when the show gets to air, what airs, and what's doing best. It has nothing to do with the creators. You cannot blame them for these hiatuses. I talked about this on the Clop Draw podcast in Glass of War. Also, I'd like to point out, I watched the whole show without those hiatuses. I was able, I just, like, had it on my PC, so I just watched it, and I didn't have to worry about the hiatuses or anything. I mean, I have to wait until Steven Universe Future comes out, but um, when the movie came out recently, I, I just binge-watched the whole show and watched the movie, and um, all these complaints don't really hold up when you watch the show without any long uninterrupted periods of time where uh or or long uninterrupted periods of time where the show isn't airing like these hiatuses and whatnot water as the waiting dragged on and on and on people started getting angry hiatuses happen in tv shows all the time but steven universe has hiatuses in excess and that kind of drawn out waiting is unheard of but here's where the biggest problem lies if you binge watch the series now everything seems fine the filler episode's biggest mm -hmm. problem in retrospect is just that they're boring and most people would rather be told the cool story about space battles not the boring story about some loudmouth frat who doesn't have any earlobes but when you put it into the context of people waiting six months after leaving that kid on a hostile alien planet only to come back and not even bother giving it a passing glance for multiple weeks people are going to get angry because you're just jerking them around then shit on Cartoon Network. Not on... Not on the creators. The creators don't decide when the show fucking airs. She's actually blaming the creators for this. So, I don't know whether or not Lily Orchard is, like, so stupid that she doesn't know how production of a show works. Mind you, I barely know how the production of a show works. I only know... I Like, listen, I have a very base level of knowledge on how the production of a show works. I know that the fucking writers and the directors of shows are not the ones who decide when the show gets to air on a network, okay? I know that much. Maybe Lily Orch Orchard is just too stupid to know that, um, but from what I've seen of her in the past, I honestly think that she is um, legitimately just such a bad faith actor that she will just lie in order to make her point. Okay, keep keep Malden, Lily. Keep Malden for us. ...around and wasting their goddamn time. The fact is, Steven Universe had ample time to appropriately put filler and just decided to fill it with nothing. Filler episodes exist so that you don't have to go on hiatus. Your story lasts 12 episodes, but they order 24, so you spread those story episodes out between fun filler episodes to pass the time and create organic gaps between story events. Steven Universe just has pauses and gaps in between that otherwise organic scheduling and throws everything off. When people hear that Steven Universe is coming back after six months, the last thing they're going to want to see is some episode about Mayor Dewey. She's still doing it. Why is she still doing it? She's not stopping. She, she's not stopping it. She's, she's just going to keep blaming the creators of the show. Um, she even admitted that when you watch it all now without any breaks or hiatuses, it seems fine. There's just the occasional boring episode. But she's blaming the, the creators for what the network did. We don't need a break from the story, we just fucking had one. This contributes to what many people see as a feeling that the story is stalling because it has these long stretches of nothing, then comes back to filler that should have been put in those gaps. If you believe that it's all Cartoon Network's doing for the constant hiatuses, it is. which I don't. What? So... Wait... Wait. So, I'm right. She's either stupid or just a bad faith actor. Does she actually believe that the hiatuses are the creator's fault? Really? You, you actually think that... How, let, let, let's go through the logic of this, actually. I want to go over the logic here. You know what? Fuck the blanket. No more Peppo Comfy. Fuck Peppo Comfy. All right? Let's go over the logic here, chat. So, Steven Universe. Let, let's, let's exist in the universe that Lily Orchard must exist in, okay? Whew. All right, let's put, our head, let, let's put our minds in this universe, okay? This twisted world that Lily Orchard seems to inhabit, all right? 
Look at me. I'm I'm Rebecca Sugar. I'm I'm part of the writer. T- I'm the head of the writer team. We're writing fucking Steven Universe. Let it, look at us go. We're writing the show. All right. We're sending it off to wherever to get it animated. Here's the storyboarding. Woo woo. Oh shit. The, you know our new season's supposed to start and um and and the show isn't done. We we need a break. We need to go on hiatus. Oh no. Okay. Well, we're gonna go on hiatus for for twelve weeks. And when it comes off of hiatus. We're going to air, like, eight episodes in one sitting. How does that make any sense? How does the logic of that make any sense? When they come off of hiatus, they hit you with the Steven bomb, where they drop, like, ten episodes all at once. The episodes were made. The episodes were produced. It was the scheduling. It was because Cartoon Network wanted to show nothing but Teen Titans Go every day, 24 fucking 7. Well, 12, 7... From, from fucking the, the start of Cartoon Network to the start of Adult Swim, just nothing but Teen Titans Go, because it makes them a lot of money, and it's just droning bullshit that people can just, like, watch. It, it literally wasn't the creator's fault. How dumb are you, Lily Orchard? H- how stupid are you? Really? Are you okay? D- did you, like, drop out of kindergarten? Oh, God. Guys, I'm about to make my edgiest joke yet. Can I? I'm gonna. I'm gonna use ableism. No, I'm gonna use sexism to destroy transphobia. Here, are you ready? Who's ready? Who's ready for me to use sexism to destroy transphobia? Here it comes, chat. This video proves that trans women are women. Because Lily Orchard is just as dumb as any cis woman. And guess what? I'm not going to get any shit for that. Because my Twitter got banned today. We have a good time here. We have a good time here, chat. Squad W. Sugar should have caught on to this a while ago and written her episodes accordingly. If you're constantly going on a hiatus, you don't need to make this kind of crap, but Sugar continued making it anyway. I don't even know why. Who goes through all that effort to make magical lesbian space rocks and then devotes so much fucking time to just average ordinary everyday humans? Are you telling me that all of the literally colorful characters in this show, your favorite is Lars? That guy doesn't have earlobes, Rebecca. The issue with filler is even worse when there's an active story arc going on. In the cluster arc, a massive artificial fusion comprised of millions of gem shards, by the way, remember this, this is gonna be important later, is discovered to be baking beneath the Earth's crust and will soon form and destroy the entire planet. I repeat, it will soon destroy the entire fucking planet. Now, when it- All right, so she's going to say that no- nothing came of the cluster. What ends up happening is that the cluster ends up being good and then helps them fight the diamonds. That that ends up being the end of that story. But, uh, whew. The other show, this kind of story would have a sense of urgency about it. Not in Steven Universe, however. The episodes Back to the Barn, Too Far, The Answer, Steven's Birthday, Message Received, and Log Date 7152 barely have anything to do with the actual story. They spend most of the time chilling and not really doing much. It's only Back to the Barn that in any way advances the story itself, and there's no reason why the other three couldn't have waited until after the cluster had been stopped. If you take the episodes that make up the cluster arc and rearrange them so the waffling happens after the cluster- How long does she go about this? How long does she go on about the, the hiatuses and the scheduling? This- this doesn't, this has nothing whatsoever to do with the show or with the show's creators at all. What are you doing, Lily Orchard? Come on. Has been bubbled. This problem goes away for something that threatens the earth. The thing the Crystal Gems care about more than anything else. There's a distinct lack of actual tension in the story. Nobody's stressed out. Nobody's worried. Wait, no, scratch that. Paradox worried, but don't worry. We'll abide. Hey, Waffle Boy. Thanks for the $5. I'll read your dono in a bit. Soon enough. For an arc supposedly about the cluster, I actually forgot it was even a thing on first viewing because several episodes in a four month hiatus went by without it getting a passing mention. After Malachi is defeated, the cluster starts to wake up and everyone's like, oh yeah, the cluster's a thing. Nearly every arc has this issue. The Jasper arc from Gem Hunter Earthlings has Bismuth smacked in the middle of it. The Homeworld arc has Dewey wins, Gem Cation, and Kevin party wedged inside it. And the Pink Diamond arc that immediately follows has five episodes jammed between it before anything remotely resembling a conclusion starts to inch its way forward. The biggest contributor to this constant starting and stopping is the fact that Steven Universe plays out like any other cartoon. But unlike any other cartoon, it's lashed to Steven. I'd like to point something out here. Here, all right so when you account for the fact that um let's account for the fact that uh uh, uh hold on let's, let's, let's rewind a little bit here there it is all right so when you account for the fact that the like if you take out the um the hiatuses as a factor when it comes to these things uh uh which you should because they aren't the fault of the show each of these episodes is 11 minutes this is 55 minutes of filler 
it's really not that much. If you're binging a show, 55 minutes, not really that much time. That's like one episode of most, like, most shows. Like, this would be like one filler episode of The Walking Dead, if you were binge-watching The Walking Dead. Not even. I'm pretty sure an episode of The Walking Dead is like an hour and 15 minutes, right? Yeah, three seconds is too much. Like, this is just a lot of... Not only does this video just age terribly, because it doesn't take into account anything that happens after the creation of this video, which I wouldn't expect it to, um, but it also, so far, we're 10 minutes in out of a two-hour video. We're not watching the whole fucking thing, guys, but we'll, we'll get far, okay? I want to get to the part where she starts calling Rebecca Sugar a fascist and saying the LGBT rep representation in this show is bad. Um, we'll get to that. But uh, she's dumping a lot of the blame on factors that just have nothing NOTHING to do with the the creators of the show. Ironically enough, hey chat, why did Steven Universe get put on hiatus? Why did Cartoon Network do it? I want to see your answers in chat. Why did they do it? Oh, all right, Shiba, anim Shiba time. You got it first. Teen Titans Go. Why did they uh, saturate the channel with Teen Titans Go and put Steven Universe on a hiatus? Why? Why do they want to get more money? You are on it today, Shiba time. You're absolutely fucking right. Capitalism. So, I don't want to be that guy, but the re all of the problems so far that Lily Orchard has listed about Steven Universe, capitalism is the problem. God, I love doing my job. I'm an arc that immediately follows has five episodes jammed between it before anything remotely resembling a conclusion starts to inch its way forward. The biggest contributor to this constant starting and stopping is the fact that Steven Universe plays out like any other cartoon. But unlike any other cartoon, it's lashed to Steven himself at all times. So while in theory, the plot tends to play out at a relatively realistic pace, all the important and interesting things are happening completely off screen. This is why there are so many episodes about Steven bombing around Beach City. Why there are so many instances of random characters doing fuck all with Steven. Why there are so many episodes where Steven is hanging out with some other gem only for the plot to come bursting through the wall or a character's personal issues just jump right out of the blue. This is most egregious in Last One Out of Beach city where the episode is entirely about pearl seducing some human lady who looks like rose and also steven is there he's been shoved into the episode just because the show has mandated that he always be here despite the fact that the episode would work just as well if not better if he wasn't hogging screen time okay so um who's seen okay so if you've seen the uh, out of the blue yeah i know um so uh, 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 something i get from most people who make these like super negative videos in the steven universe like god there's like a whole there's a whole culture on youtube Hold on, look, look at this. Let's just search Steven Universe bad. God, I cannot type today. I Because I have my microphone literally right in front of my keyboard. I can't fucking see shit. And I type like a boomer. Let's just search Steven Universe bad. Look. Look at all this. Oh, look, there's Easy Peasy. He followed me on Twitter. Um, look at all this. There is a fucking community there's a nazi that made a video too there is a community based around shitting on a uh, shitting on steven universe it's it's a big it's a big meme but what i notice about all of these videos that are meant to shit on steven universe is that they um they, they don't age well do they they really don't so yeah, I know his video was bad. I'll I'll fucking have Easy Peasy on one day and I'll debate him on some shit. He he he's he's quite a reactionary. Um, but he he seems like he's somewhat open minded. Um, so if you've seen the Steven Universe movie, a big part of that movie is Steven forgetting his character development. He loses his powers and he's like, "Why the fuck can't I do anything anymore? I can't fly." And I don't have my healing powers. I can't do all this cool shit anymore. How am I supposed to save everyone without it? And it's like, oh, fuck. What did I do way back in the day at the beginning of the show when I was literally just a dumb kid and I didn't have any powers yet? I had the power to change people's minds and help them achieve redemption. And that's what gets him his powers back. His character development throughout the show is literally 
what ends up solving the it's literally the, what solves the plot at the end of the movie that's what the show's all about the, the show is about evolving a character who starts out as being just sort of a dumb innocent kid to being what he is in the steven universe movie that's his whole point Whew, this video aged like goat milk I need to stress that this is unusual for any TV show. TV shows are typically written in a full third-person perspective so that the focus can shift for a bit when necessary. Avatar is a ton of moments where the perspective shifts to zoom. The show is called Steven Universe. Why would it not be focused on him? Guys, the name of the show is his name. Zuko and Iroh as early as the first episode, and even episodes where Aang isn't present at all. Fan favorite episodes like Zuko Alone, Tales of Bossing Say, The Boiling Rock, The Southern Raiders, and Three Quarters of Sozin's Comet wouldn't have happened if the series lashed itself to Aang the way Steven Universe lashed itself to Steven. We probably have more insight into the diamonds as a whole if the show could just bother to tear itself away from Steven for even a second. Even episodes that technically don't feature Steven are either a story being told to him or feature a fusion that Steven inhabits. With this arbitrary restriction in place, a lot of interesting things happen completely off screen, which in terms of storytelling means it doesn't actually happen. Legend of Korra had this problem to an extent in its final season, where 95% of Kuvira's asshole dictator behavior happens off screen and is only ever vaguely alluded to. And a lot of people bought that laziness with, oh, well, it happens off screen. That's not good enough. You have to show it to us. Steven Universe has so many characters that just sit there and do fucking nothing because Steven isn't around to see them. Lapis and Peridot are the two biggest examples as they're locked in the barn at all times until Steven decides to visit them, at which point something actually happens. Lapis is actually one of many characters who has a lot of shit to work through. But Wait a second. She, so she just complained that too much stuff is happening off screen because Steven isn't there. So we would get more stuff if the show didn't follow Steven so closely, because then it wouldn't just be, we would see more from the diamonds. But at the same time, it's bad that when Steven shows up, they wait for things to happen on screen till when Steven shows What is the fucking logic here? Here, I got some donuts. I'm going to acknowledge them really quick. Uh, $5 from Waffle Boy says, keep doing what you're doing. Appreciate you, bud. Trans rights are human rights. You're damn right trans rights are human rights. Um, have you seen, uh, Gramp Glass's response to Lily's Steven video? It's long, but it goes over the major points, uh, the major, major points Lily ma made, oh yeah, because it cut off, um, made against the show and debunks a lot of it, and even, uh, Robo Buddies, who Lily references in her video, agrees that Lily is wrong. I mean, yeah, Lily is, like, she, she has her audience, she has, like, like, a little over 100k subs, but, um, the consensus around this community seems to be that Lily Orchard is just sort of an insufferable bitch. So, yeah. To actually do that in the vast majority of cases because Steven isn't there, so she's not allowed to do anything. As a result of this, Lapis comes off to many people as one of Sugar's dozens of attempts at woobifying absolutely terrible and reprehensible people, and we'll fucking get to that. But Lapis didn't have to be this way. If you replaced every single episode of Steven screwing around a beach city with some rando with episodes about the other gems, Lapis could have actually been a character. I think she just give us, gave us a little tip about something that she gets really mad about later, about giving really fucked up characters redemption personally i'm a fan of that i like being able to take a villain and then like have them gain some humility and then feel bad for what they've done and try to achieve redemption for what they did i mean there were two really good video games with the term redemption in their name that were about that and it's a very good storytelling technique but okay Peridot could contribute in some way. Amethyst might have been able to work through her insecurities more organically. Pearl might not have been such a crazy asshole. Garnet might not have been relegated to exposition about fusion and nothing else. An entire arc about Lapis becoming a better person and making a turnaround from the abusive fuckstick she used to be? That sounds a hell of a lot better than the six episodes trying to salvage Lars before Sugar just gave up, killed him off, and replaced him with Zaphod Beetle Brox. Sugar likes to put terrible people in leather pants so much. Wait. What? Guys, I, I swear to God, I'm watching this at 1.5 times speed. Okay, and we're only 13 minutes out of two hours and seven minutes into this, and the amount of bullshit, the sheer quantity that I'm being bombarded with, I, li I literally can't finish this video in one sitting. I, I don't know if we could. Maybe I could, like, make it a multi-parter? Is that what we're gonna do? Are we gonna make this a multi-parter? What about this, guys? What do you think? We watch the whole video, and I split it up into four one-hour parts to upload his clips to the channel. I feel like that wouldn't be a good idea. No way. We can't watch this whole fucking thing, but we're going to try to get the juiciest bits to uh, to cover, because holy fuck, this is a bad video. And it's it's such a massive quantity of bad, too. Um, when responding to woke scolds on Twitter, don't use the Pepe eye roll. Just respond with anything they say with amazing. Um, no, the, the Pepe eye roll is pretty funny. 
I got banned on Mother top Twitter, though. actually grow and become better and earn that supposed redemption, rather than just stagnating for years until you just steal all your girlfriend's shit and leave. Once again, another story about abuse that gets outclassed by Family Guy of all fucking things. The end result of this laser focus on Steven means that nothing is fucking happening. There's so many throwaway episodes you can just skip and not miss anything, where nothing interesting happens, none of the characters we actually like so much to show their faces, and nobody who matters actually grows or changes in any way. Steven Universe, because of this forced person- Yeah, just make- just use the list. There's like a, a list of- of like episodes that you can watch if you want to avoid any filler episodes, you can just watch that. I mean, if you want to, I don't think that would be good. Are you going to make another Twitter account, Big Puncher? I, I sent an appeal to my uh, ban. I got banned off Twitter today, for those of you guys that don't know. Um, I didn't get an email about it. They didn't give me a reason. They just banned my account. And uh, some pretty big YouTubers had followed me on Twitter, too. I was t I was um, DMing with Shoe on Head. And um, Justin Wang from the... Uh, fuck, I forget what his channel is called. It's a big channel. It's got like 400k subs. He followed me on... Uh, on Twitter too, just last night before the ban. Yeah, Wang from Wang. Yeah, um, but yeah, they just fucking banned me. From what I could tell, it's probably the woke scolds again. Cause like literally an hour after I was banned, um, this same motherfucker who uh, who I got into an argument with on Twitter once is like ranting about me. Here, I can show you actually. Let me show you guys. So uh, let's see. If you look up Pig Puncher. Since I'm technically, technically not logged into my Twitter right now. And you go to latest. It's this person right here. Slightly sluggy. They, uh, they've uh they been ranting about me for like literal weeks straight. Since the, uh... Since we had an argument on Twitter. Uh, and, and claims that like you guys in my community have been harassing them. Or her. Pronouns, let's see. She, her, okay, cool. Uh, harassing her it's, it's pretty fucking it's pretty dumb still still banned zero followers zero following um i can still see my notifications uh i can still see my notifications these update so i don't know if it's a glitch i can't look at my dms even though i have a message like this is from literally nine minutes ago far left chud gloated about it on kiwi farms i know yeah they're they get mad about people getting deplatformed, but they deplatform those they disagree with. So, like, I can still browse Twitter. I can't post or DM anybody, though. It's pretty stupid. They didn't give me any reason to, but hey, let's finish up this stupid fucking video before I claw my own eyes out. Perspective remains steadfast in its refusal to actually explore any of the ideas it presents. Instead, it offers hints. It gives hints that Lapis might have PTSD. It gives hints that Peridot might have self-worth issues. It gives hints of character development. This isn't good writing. It's lazy writing. The sad thing is it's lazy writing that works. When I did my video about Tempest Shadow, one of those common attempts at a reputation from people was to accuse me of not being able to see hints of character development and people speculating on what Tempest's life could have been. But I did see those hints of character development, and I did speculate on their potential. But I also rightfully concluded that because the movie didn't bother to do anything with that potential, then that potential was irrelevant. This is something most fandoms can't grasp when hinting at character development is the easy way out for a lot of shows. Steven Universe hints at something interesting about a character and just fucking leaves it there. The fandom picks it up and speculates, concocts elaborate theories that delve into layers of intrigue, and then concludes that because of all the speculation, that Steven Universe is an amazing show. Do you see what's just happened, though? Rebecca Sugar is getting all the credit and praise, but the fans are the ones doing all the real work. They're writing elaborate story ideas that the show will never even try to use, but she's getting all the credit for it. Steven Universe is providing little more than a collection of writing prompts and being heralded as an amazing and deep show just because a bunch of far more creative people can write 50 pages based off those prompts. The big twist of the show is that Rose is Pink Diamond, but that twist was guessed by the- Oh! Fans. This was after that, okay. The, the moment Pink Diamond's name was first mentioned, and I said at the time that the Rose's Pink Diamond theory was without a doubt the worst possible way to end that entire arc, which meant Sugar was definitely going to do it. Worse off, not- Really? The Rose's Pink Diamond theory is the worst way to end off this arc. Whew, this video didn't age well, did it? Whew. Does she get to anything substantive in this entire video? When does she get to the real bad shit where she starts accusing, um, accusing Rebecca Sugar of being a fascist sympathizer? I really want to see that. That was some good content. Let's see. It's simply because we're going to expand on it later. If Steven likes someone, then there are a million excuses and that wasn't so bad for their actions. But if Steven- Okay. Oh, is this it actually? Are we getting the good shit here? 
All right. For the fact that the show is using this metric to determine who the sympathetic and irredeemable characters are. So Jasper and Kevin are terrible, but the consistently worse Diamonds, Lars, Ronaldo, Lapis, and Andy are sympathetic. The show says Steven likes this person, therefore you should too. You are to leave the cluster to grow. It will tear apart the Earth, and I will take immense satisfaction in erasing that hideous rock off of our star maps. Is that clear? Yellow Diamond is the proof that everything Sugar says about having planned everything from the start is a complete lie. When Yellow Diamond first appeared, she was exactly the kind of character we had come to expect from all the setup. Menacing, ruthless, and cold-hearted. She was posed, animated, and voiced perfectly. What do I mean when I say this? Well, the Diamonds are all blatant space Nazis right down to committing at least two acts of genocide. There isn't much you can do with that as far as complexity goes, unless you're a shit person. So all you could really do is instill a feeling in the viewer of kicking your ass is going to be fun. This tends to be why the more overtly totalitarian a character is, the more they're reduced to just a string of intimidating poses and ass kicking. It's all saying, here's our villain, they kick so much ass, so it's gonna be all the sweeter when we grind their face into the dirt. There's just one problem, Sugar hated it. Sugar didn't write this episode and apparently hated Yellow Diamond in this so much that she personally wrote and storyboarded her next appearance and that will be all, which had her radically changed from being ruthless and cold-hearted to repressing her grief over the loss of Pink Diamond. After this, her next appearance was in the trial, also not written by Sugar, and Yellow was back to being a colorful Darth Vader. Oh, disregard that last statement. I might have gotten carried away. You can see this pushing and pulling with Yellow throughout the series, and depending on who is writing her, she becomes a completely different character. For a while, someone was pushing back against Sugar's insistence that the villains be sad little babies, but Sugar ultimately won out, and by the time of Reunited, Yellow was racked with grief and immediately experiences a turnaround as Steven literally bullshits everyone's prop. D Guys. I think Lily really just wished they killed the diamonds and that was the that was how they solved everything i think lily just wanted the fucking diamonds to be murdered for their for their heinous shit that they did instead of being redeemed i think she just sees them as being irredeemable i <laughs> characters having personality traits complexity Well, this video is quite the, uh, quite the tumor. This video right here, chat, look, I want you to look at it. You see this video right here? That's it right here. This video is a tumor. This channel, this YouTube channel right here, this person right here is a tumor. She's a living tumor. Hold on, look. She right here. This chick, tumor. This is this is cancer. This right here, this is cancer. When you go to the hospital and like the doctor like gives you an MRI or whatever they do to find cancer in your body and they find like a tumor, it's just this. It's just this right here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a second. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, the like dislike ratio is 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 blocked yeah i'm surprised she didn't disable comments too <laughs> oh jesus christ but um yeah i don't think we need to watch any more of this if you've seen steven universe and you're caught up on the show um just even how much she blames the creators of the show for um for stuff that isn't even their fault just the um uh, literally the uh, 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 the hiatuses and stuff, just stuff that has nothing to do with the show's creators and something they couldn't have planned for um, to a certain extent. It's just such bullshit. Um, also, uh, she did a video on Hasbin Hotel. Ooh, fuck, maybe I should have covered that one. Because uh, I watched Hasbin Hotel and it's pretty damn good. And Lily Orchard is pretty damn stupid, so she probably thinks it's problematic. Let's Let's watch really quick. Hold on. Is saying the fuck word. Okay, that's about what I expected from this video. Whew! You know what? We're gonna do we're gonna do an epic we're gonna do an epic gamer moment, and before we end this video, I'm gonna turn it up to two times speed and see what she has to say about this. You know, as the animation industry continues to jam force into its eyes, it's nice to see that the indie scene is becoming stronger and stronger. As homegrown artists and animators become more fluent with the craft, and organizations like Nano, Rymo keep a healthy batch of fresh writing talent stimulated until that book they're writing totally becomes a big hit any minute now. More and more creators seem to be turning towards self-promotion and crowdfunding to get their passion projects off the ground, and that's what leads us to Hasbin Hotel, probably one of the most promising pilots I've seen in a very long time. So Hasbin Hotel is an adult comedy that takes place in hell. Every year, there are mass genocides committed by the angels of heaven because of overpopulation in hell, making it difficult to fit more souls inside. Three mounds, and to go around. Tired of seeing her people being slaughtered, Charlie, the princess of hell, off to open a hotel to rehabilitate sinners. Her idea is then laughed at because who in hell would want to be a better person? But Charlie gets some last minute help from a powerful creature called the Radio Team, and who wants to help with the hotel because he's bored and thinks watching sinners fail miserably would be ideal entertainment for him. And bam, there you go. Great premise, great characters, great everything. 
absolutely love it. One thing that does give me pause is that the premise right from the start is redemption, which is always a dangerous premise to have because if you're not careful, you're in a position where you accidentally. <laughs> okay, okay, hold on, she's doing it again. Exactly, she did the white with the diamonds. Wait a second, hold on. Watching sinners fail miserably would be ideal entertainment for him. And bam, there you go. Great premise, great characters, great everything. Love it. One thing that does give me pause is that the premise right from the start is redemption, which is always a dangerous premise to have, because if you're not careful, you could end up in a position where you're accidentally deep-throating an SS boot in the hopes it'll start crying and pledge to be a better person. This premise- Remember guys, you can't be redeemed. If you're a bad person, you're fucking done. Okay, that's about as enough that's about as much as I can fucking handle. Holy shit. Someone someone please kill me in a video game in Age of Empires 2, please. God. Uh, leave a like and sub if you like this video. Have a good one.